Jesus' name. We are looking this morning at wisdom in watchfulness. Wisdom in watchfulness. And let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to bless your name once again for the opportunity to look at the liberty, the law of liberty, the law that you have given to us, the everlasting gospel that is able to change our life, able to change our soul. We ask that the entrance of your world, this almighty God, Father, afternoon, it will bring light into any darkness of our heart in Jesus' name. That light will dispel, almighty God, Father, every darkness of Satan that lock in our soul in Jesus' name. It will bring life to us. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We are looking at wisdom in watchfulness. And there we are looking at Psalm 39 from verses 1 to 13. Actually, this reason started from uh, Psalm 38 because at this time, David is sovereign for his sin, the sin that he has committed against God. And the hand of God was mighty, mighty to, to actually afflict David because a sinner will not go unpunished. God can forgive sin, but the repercussion for sin lingers, and the sinner will suffer for the sins that he has committed. Sometimes that sin will lead to severe punishment. At another time, that person will actually die. I pray we will not die in sin in Jesus' name. In Psalm 39, from verse 1, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. You see, I pray that when the wicked is before us, we will keep our mouth. Because it's going to take our word and multiply it and go and tell our enemy. It says, verse 2, I, will, I, I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was teared. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire born. Then speak I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days that it is that it is that I may know how frail I am. If you look at verse uh, Psalm 90, the same thing. The psalmist is asking God here that teach us to number our days so that we can put our heart on the, on the path of wisdom. Here, he continues in the reasoning. He said, Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breath, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best, best state is altogether vanity. Every man at his best state, all together vanity. And he said, pause and think about all this world from verses 1 to 5. Then he began another reasoning, another chapter. He said, surely every man will get in a vain soul. Surely they are dis disquieted in vain. He heaped up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thy hand. When thou wilt, when thou wilt rebuke, just correct man for iniquity. Thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is again, every man is vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my father's war. Oh, spare me that I may recover strength 
before I go hence and be no more. I pray whoever is, living, is suffering for the repercussion of sin, the Lord will have mercy today in Jesus' name. The psalmist had been bowed down with sickness and sorrow. He had been sorely tempted with unbelieving thought. You know, he has sinned against God. He has did what ought not to be done. And he acknowledged it because God challenged him. And God brought his iniquity right before his, his eyes. And God said, look, thou art the man. And God said, look, for the repercussion of this sin, this and this and this is going to come as a result of this wickedness. Because every wickedness, every sin is wickedness against God. The psalmist had been bowed down with sickness and sorrow. He had been sorely tempted with unbelieving thoughts. So he resolved to be firm in his faith in wisdom. He became silent as he meditated on the picture of human life. He looked at the whole of the human life. You will see that except a man is in Christ, Every thought and the imagination of the heart of man, the Bible says, is wicked. And that wickedness is continuous. There's no end to it. Unless you allow, the light, you allow the light of Christ to shine upon your heart and break forth that trend of wickedness. I pray the Lord will break it in our life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we look at our message now under three subheadings, and maybe we just take one today, and then we continue from there. Number one is silence and dumbness. He said, look, I keep my mouth. If you go to Psalm 139, you will see here, the psalmist here want God to just put a chain round about his mouth so that, you know, he will not speak when unadvisedly, when he's suppressed, and especially you know, when the, the, the wicked is be, before him. He said that, you know, he, put, he said, Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knowest my dance city and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. You understand my thought. You know what, even though the, the, the person next to me, he may not know what I am thinking. He said, but God, you know what I am thinking at all times. He said here, you know it. Search me. When my thought is straying away from the path of righteousness, God, search me out. Put a bridle upon my tongue and let me not speak unadvisedly. Remember, if you, the Bible says that for every idle word that a man will speak, what will he do for those words? He will account for it on the day of judgment. Man will account for every word that he will speak, whether advisedly or unadvisedly. You will have to pay for every unadvised word. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, not when there's trouble, especially when you are going through maybe difficulty in life. You don't know the genesis of that difficulty. You don't know why it is. You might know that maybe you have sinned against God. And you are looking at God and say, maybe because of that sin. What you need to do at that time is to repent and fall on your face and see God and say, God, I am sorry. God will forgive. If a man confess his sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But the repercussion for sin, the man will suffer for it. I pray you not sin against God. That is why you don't want to go to this uh, presumptuous sin. You don't want to go to presumption and just beginning to do something and say, well, God understand. God is going to, you know, he understand he's going to forgive. I'm going to repent. Who say you're going to repent? What if you cannot repent? What if God do not accept 
your repentance. Because it's within his disposal to say, okay, I forgive you or I do not forgive you. He said to Jeremiah, don't pray for these people. Because if you pray for them, I will not hear. Praise the Lord. So are you, can we arrest him before, because he will not hear? Yeah, he said, don't pray for them. He said, look, all the children that are born in that land, they are for sure. Judgment has been passed. And it must come to pass. He said, so pray for them. You are just wasting your time. He said, even you, Jeremiah, don't bother marrying. Just go celibacy, life of celibacy, all your days. Don't marry. Because if you marry in this land, they are for sure. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So that was why Jeremiah just continued in the ministry. Praise the Lord. So don't say I will sin and repent later. It's deadly. You may not be able to, to repent. You don't know the end, what will happen in the end. It must just be that you are sleeping and you sleep and you sleep into eternity. Praise the Lord. You might be unconscious. It might be that he is in the plane. All right? And the, the pilot suddenly announced uh, it, a, a plane was traveling from, uh, I think it was California, going to Cincinnati, Ohio. The pilot passed out. Thank God that the pilot that was in, on vacation was in the plane. Has to take over. Go to the uh, cockpit. And go and take over to help the co-pilot. The pilot passed out. What if you are in that plane? All right? And they say, okay, say your last, uh, say your, your last prayer. At that time, you are confused. You don't even know what to say. Whether to repent. You don't even know which one to repent. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So you can see the people that are there. Pandemonium will set in. So don't go to sin and say, I will repent, I will repent later. Silence and numbness. The number two is sigh of David. David is a man that always takes account of his life. He will always look back. Self-examination. In focus. You know, don't focus on that sister. Leave that sister alone to her God. Leave that brother alone to her God. Don't focus on the other brother. Don't focus on that family. Leave that family alone. Let everybody carry their own cross. No backbiting, no gossiping. Just face your God. And when you do that, the Lord will help you. He will make you to heaven. In Jesus' name. Number three, supplication for deliverance. When he look back, when he look inward, David, he will say, God, <laughs> you know what? I messed up. I need mercy. Say, God, no, if you don't even forgive me now, how can I go and preach? We are going for evangelism from this time now till maybe November, as God give us life. If Jesus Christ tarries, because Jesus is coming, Maranatha, and we don't know when. It might be tomorrow. It might be in the midnight. Trumpet can sound. And if trumpet does not sound, maybe death is coming. And the day you die, the day is, that is the day of your rapture. Praise the Lord. The end is here. I pray before that time, you will set to your account with Christ. In Jesus' name. Number one is silence and dumbness. It said here, in his determination to avoid sin, he stead steadily resolved to bridle his tongue. He said, I will just shut my mouth when a wicked man is before me. Not even a wicked man alone. If I don't have anything to say, I will not be looking for words. Talk, talk, talk from one thing to the other, one thing to the other. And then, in the multitude of words, what is not wanting there? It's dead. Sin is not wanting there in the multitude of words. He said in his determination to avoid sin, he steadily resolved to bridle his tongue. And be silent. Unguided way leads to graceless actions. Unguided way. In terms of sickness or other troubles of life, we must watch against sin. Peculiar to such a trials. Whatever you are going through, it might be your place of work. Suddenly, the devil raises up an adversary against you there. 
Just go before the law. The law will remove that adversary before you because he said, I will be an adversary to thy adversary. That is what is going to happen. And the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. So, be very careful, especially against murmuring and repining. Remember, the children of Israel, the bane of their lives was to complain. Instead of praying, whether you complain, you can complain from now till eternity, that situation is there. Do you know how you can get it off? Get on your knee and say, God, if you are still the same God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, undertake for me. Help me from this situation. Does God answer? God answers prayer. I'm telling you. It's, it's sure. You are a child of God. God cannot be unrighteous not to answer your prayer. And the Lord will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Look at uh, 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 Proverbs in Chapter 21, verse 23. Proverbs 21. And there look in verse 23. In verse 23, Proverbs 21, the Bible says that whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul from what? From troubles. You just keep your mouth. I wish the children of Israel just kept their mouth. No grumbling, no complaint. Just say, okay. If God can, can, can part the Red Sea, he parted it. We, we walk on that, inside the Red Sea, on a dry ground. God made a path. That same God, no matter what comes our way, guess what? It's going to come true for us. He said to Moses, he said, look, my name is Jehovah. That is still his name up to today. It will be Jehovah in your situation. In Jesus' name. He said, look, Moses, I, I, I appeared unto Abraham, to, unto Isaiah, unto Jacob, with my name, Lord God Almighty. He said, but because of what is before you, you are going to take these people out of the land of slavery. You know, the land you have not tried before. I will be Jehovah. At any crossroad, I will be there. Was he there for them? He was there. God will be there for you. Amen. All you need to do, just trust in God. And, and, and don't give up. Whatever is going on, just know that at the back of your mind, it's temporary. Time is going to come to pass. And God will come true for you. And the Lord will come true for you in Jesus' name. So time will, 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 will come that you will look back and say, wait a minute. That thing, I don't even see it again. And then you begin, oh, wow. Okay, I've got my healing. You will get your healing. Amen. In Jesus' name. In, in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And there look at from verse number 1. Before we pray. He said, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to do what? To hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart be hasty to do what? To utter things before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be what? Be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Look at verse 4. And we need to learn from this. It says, When thou vowest a vow, what do you do unto God? They find not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Praise the Lord. You know, we said we are going to get a building, and some people say they are going to give money. Up to today, have you redeemed your pledge? Find that from yourself. You know it. And if you have not done that, the Bible is saying that God has no pleasure in a fool. God called the people that made a vow and did not redeem it 
God said, the person is a fool. I will not be a fool. In Jesus' name. It said here in Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12, uh, verse 35 to 37. Before we go to pray, Matthew chapter 12, from verse number 35. In verse 35, the Bible says here that a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth evil, forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, what would they do? They shall give account. They are off in the day of judgment. For, for by thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy word thou shalt be condemned. You will not be condemned in the last day in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will help us. The Lord will keep us. And the purpose of God for our lives will be, will, be, will be fulfilled. It will be established forever in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We have said that we will, we will not waste people's time. We will close at 12.30. And uh, it's just 12.34 now. So talk to the Lord in prayer. Ask God to have mercy and help you out. That when you don't need to talk, you will not talk. And you'll be watchful over your tongue. Don't allow your tongue to make you to speak unadvisedly against the Lord. Even against your neighbor, against your brother, against your sister. Immediately you speak the word. It has gone out. You cannot, you cannot take it back. Ask God to put a lock upon your mouth and help you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask God to help you that when you don't need to talk, you will not talk. Out of, the, out of the multitude of words, the Bible says that there wanted no sin. There is always sin there. Talk here, talk, 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 talk. You will not talk. You will put a, a chain upon your mouth. And the Lord will help you out to do that in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word will be the word of wisdom. The word of edification that will minister grace to the hearer. And as you do it, you will see that the Lord glory will shine upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord that the Lord will help you. Pray for the church. Pray for our brethren. Pray for every family in the church. Pray for our children in their children's church. The Lord will visit them. The Lord will visit their teacher and multiply his grace upon their life. Ask the Lord. The Lord will visit our children, our young, our youth. The Lord will visit them. The purpose of God for their life will be established. Anywhere they are, in the name of Jesus Christ, ask God for them, that God will keep them. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray for our young adults. At that age, so many things are going on, and except they have you no know, surrendered spirit, soul, and body to Christ, they will be they be they be stumbling. That our young adult will not stumble. They will walk uprightly before God. And the purpose of God for their life will be established. Pray for our adult, adult member, that in their exploit, the Lord will guide them. Pray for our senior citizen. The Lord will keep them in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not lose them. The gray here will be for wisdom. And they, they will lead the young ones. In the name of Jesus Christ. They will cancel their, their grandchildren and the way that they will follow so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord. The Lord will do it for us as we follow through in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for your word today. We thank you, Father, because in all the segments of the service, you have indeed spoken to us. And a word is enough for the wise. Father, we will not be ever learning, but never come to the knowledge of the truth. That we have, we have received today, let it be, O oh God, a source of reservoir in our spirit, in our soul, that as we live our life, 
we will tap from those reservoirs in Jesus' name. Amen. The word from the church, the church in, uh, in Smyrna, where you said, Lord, that you know you, you walk in the midst of that church, and you know their thought, you know their uprising and their dancing, you know the thought of the heart of every one of them. So also, in the church in Philadelphia today, you know our thought. Where our thought is impure, help us, O God. Purify our thoughts in Jesus' name. Amen. Any thought that is evil, any thought that is wickedness, that is callous, wicked thought from the heart that is locked in there, let the power in the blood dislodge those thoughts out of our spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there any unforgiveness in this church? A brother cannot forgive the other brother. A sister. Oh, it's an irreconcilable difference between husband and wife. Lord God of Sabbath, we ask the day will be the end of it. Amen. Father, there be forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Is there any sickness in this church right now? The, blood, the Bible says that, oh God, you will not put any of these diseases that you have put upon the Egyptian upon us, because you are the Lord that healed us. By the stripe of Jesus Christ, we decree healing upon every soul in this church in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says you are wounded because of our transgression. You are bruised because of, us, because of our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. Father, in unity of faith, we declare healing Amen. upon every soul, Amen. upon every one, every individual that is sick in this church in Jesus' name. Amen. Even the people on the Zoom platform, Father, move in every home and, and cause healing upon your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Everlasting Father, we pray for our children. You will fill them with wisdom. Amen. You will fill them with your spirit Amen. in wisdom in understanding and in knowledge. Amen. Our student, Lord, you give them understanding more than their professor. Amen. Let your testimony be their meditations in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray for our brethren, looking up unto you for a residency paper. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Lord, this land belongs to you. We are asking, O oh God, that to make an open door. You will begin to move in the Congress. And Lord God of heaven, the two parties, they will come together, do, O oh God, immigration reform that will benefit our brethren in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we, pray, we, we, we bless your name for this afternoon. We give you all the glory and honor. We exalt your majesty. Everlasting Father, whatever in need is represented here today, we ask that in your mercy, you will meet those needs. Amen. We pray for our visitor today, you will visit her. Amen. You will visit her home. Amen. You will multiply your grace upon her life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the answer. We pray for the people on the Zoom platform. Oh, Lord God of heaven, in those homes, let something tangible, a blessing that they have never seen before, let it follow them in their homes in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's hear the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Remain blessed in Jesus' name.